Hello, we are here for yet another great conversation. Um, uh, my name is Elena Agregimova. I'm your host of the Shift podcast, where we talk about, you know, how do we get out of our comfort zone? How can we get over our own BS to sort of reach our potential and really remove any obstacles that might be stopping us from, from getting where we want to be? And today I'm really excited to talk to Ray Kobesi. She's a mindset and mental health coach. Um, I've known Ray for a couple of years now, I guess, yeah. and uh, we've connected in, in, in doing Dubai. So I'm really, really excited to have this conversation. It's long overdue. And, and I've always enjoyed kind of listening to you and on different platforms that you speak on. So thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. So let's, let's begin. So listen, I think we're going to just keep it kind of flowing. I think between you and I, we have plenty that we can discuss. And, and I, know, I know, you know, from your experiences, <laughs> there's so many changes and, and, and sort of pushing of boundaries and getting you out of the comfort zone that you've been through. So let's just start with, you know, tell us a little bit about last time you kind of had a big change in your life. You know, what was that? What did that look like for you? So the last time, which is my recent change. Sure. Yes, let's do it. Okay. One. So it would be when I left the corporate world to have my own business. So having to shift my mindset and my lifestyle and everything from my day-to-day -day functioning from an employee to an entrepreneur or to someone who's running their own businesses. And that was so scary for me because you don't have an agenda. You don't have a team. You don't have someone to report to. You don't have someone to tell you this is right or this is wrong. You need to figure out all of this on your own. And you want to, you know, look expert, you want to look professional, and you've, you've got it all um, at the right time, right thing. But really, I, I had no idea what I'm doing. I just knew what my mission is. I just needed to figure it out. So that was really scary. And it took a lot of time from me. It took a lot of, um, I learned a lot of things. And I wish I knew them earlier that don't be scared to ask for help. And that was the scariest thing for me. Um, I would really feel the heat in my cheeks, like, oh, my God, I have to ask for help. No. <laughs> um, but now when I look back, I would say day one, just ask for help. Hey, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I quit my job and this is what I have in mind. Could you help? No. Great. You know someone who could. <laughs> that yeah. simple. But it doesn't work that way in real life. You have to just go through the mud, the way they say it. Mm -hmm. um, and you will learn. And I'm, I'm curious, so let's, let's stop here for a second. So a lot of people look to start their own businesses. And it's interesting because I tend to be around people that have jumped into business. And then others will come to me and say, listen, like, it's so scary. Like, how do you know when it's time to go into, like, how do you know that it's time to leave this comfort, you know, corporate job to go into doing my own thing? Was there anything in particular for you that was like, yeah, this is the time? Or like, was it just like one day, you're just like, this is it's just, it's going to happen. We're just going to do this. It's a combination between, oh, wow, that's a very nice question. It's a combination between your intuition. So it, for me, in my case, it was my intuition that I kept on ignoring for years. And I was not happy. I was a very miserable un, um, employee. So I was really miserable. I was working with a micromanager. I was working with someone with a lot of insecurities. And he didn't want his team to grow. And every time we come up with brilliant ideas, he would just put us down and try to project his insecurities on us. And that just gave me, you know, the boost. You know what? The corporate world is really messed up. Uh, managers or man executives are messed up. So why won't just let me do something about it? I have them. I have the why. I have the tools. I have the skills and I have the passion. Let me just put them together and see where things go. So but that phase like or that decision took me. Okay, so then, no, no. like five, six months to actually, you know what, throw myself out there. But it took me five to six months of should I, should I not, should I look for another job, should I do them in parallel, what should I do, <laughs> you know, and no yeah. one can tell you what to do. No one can tell you what to do. Your friends are not the best people to go to for this kind of advice. Coaches will definitely tell you, yes, go for it. Yes. Um, <laughs> you are the best decision maker when it comes to doing this shift. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it's interesting because also for uh, when I started, uh, when, when I've jumped into the, the story with Bestern and Yvonne, um, it, I was thinking about it for probably two years. I was like, you know, it took me two years, you know, so there's like until I had the courage and then one day it just clicked. But it really wasn't one day. It was two years of like doing side hustles and like doing side things to really kind of have the courage. And uh, another question I often get from people is, how do you know, like, you know, how do you know, how do you find that thing that you want to do, right? So in your case, when you made that shift, did you jump into the work that you're doing now? Was it kind of, did it come naturally to you that you're like, okay, I think I can actually monetize on this. And I think people would buy these products and services that I have to offer. No, for me, it, I, I knew at some point in my life, I will be doing this, what I'm doing today. It's just that I did not know when or how. Um, my story is very personal where I want to be raising awareness on well-being and mental health. And it comes from a very personal story, which you already know, which is my dad's suicide, my depression and my mental health journey. So I just wanted people to be happy. I just wanted men to be secure with their emotions, with their mindsets, so they wouldn't mess up their, the environments around them, as simple as that. I didn't want women like me to be... Uh, pressure to be someone that they're not just because someone else is struggling with their mental health and then it affects your mental health. I just wanted to break the cycle. At some point, I did not have the enough self-esteem or the enough confidence. Like, who am I to do that? Who am I? Really? I'm not Tony mm -hmm. Robbins. I'm not Oprah. I'm not Ellen. And then at some point, I literally just slept and woke up. I was like, of course, I'm not them. I'm Raf. <laughs> so... Um, but but everything just, you know, falls into the right place. As long as you have, a, for me, what worked for me is that I had a really strong why. I want to help people to be more comfortable in their own skin, mind, uh, mentally and physically, inside out. Um, and that's really what kept me going all these years. Mm. What was the hardest part of, of kind of jumping into this journey of, you know, starting your own thing? Uh, two things. One, how how should I introduce myself as someone who just had their own business now when I was an employee? So how would people take me seriously? How would I let them take me seriously now as a coach and a trainer? And two, where should I get my clients from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's the, the million dollar question when anyone who wants to open their own business would think of, like, how would I get my clients? And once you just accept the fact that they are everywhere, that's when, um, but those two things, how could I let people take me seriously now? Um, and how would I get clients? Yeah, that's a big change, right? Like to go from a comfortable, you know, yeah. corporate, no matter how miserable it is, like it still gives you that security. There's still some stability. You still have the fixed income and you're exactly. not enough to get the clients. Exactly. If you, yeah, exactly. So even if you're, if you're just not in the mood to sell today, then you just, you know, you just go with it and you you're still going to get a paycheck. <laughs> You're still going to get that paycheck. But when you jump into entrepreneurship or, you know, just whatever, whatever, you know, your side thing or your business is, yeah. you go into like, if I'm not selling today, I don't know, like, am I going to have a salary at the end of this month and I'm going to have income? So it's a whole different, uh, whole different um, uh, thing. Absolutely. And it, um, it, sometimes it's not selling. Sometimes it's to sell. You need to build up for months oh, yeah. by prospecting mm -hmm. and networking and doing marketing and doing stuff, creating content, talking talking to people this is what I do offering stuff you know how it goes mm -hmm. and then maybe one year later you start selling yeah so absolutely how, how are you going to survive in this uh, one year a lot of side hustles a lot yeah. of things that are not related to your business but you have yeah. to yeah just you have to do just do to monetize and just to keep going absolutely absolutely it's not all glamour like people think <laughs> definitely not and for weekends <laughs> yeah seven days a week 365 days a year mm -hmm. um so and so and i appreciate that about you that you've kind of even after all the different experience you've had you still had the courage to do that but take me back a little bit before that like in your earlier in your life because i think that this whole journey of building that resilience and mindset for just like like, listen, this is happening. Let me just get through it. I feel like it's been built on you from, and I mean, knowing your story, it's been built on you from earlier. So can you talk a little bit about other aspects, like on a personal side of change that you've experienced? Yeah. And if that somehow prepares you to be less maybe fearful of any other change that might come along or did it have any impact? Definitely. 
definitely. I was introduced to what life really is at a very young age. Um, let's say 13 years old or 14 years old when everything literally just, I went through my first transformation, the way I call it, which is when we, when we were living in Dubai and then my dad's business just went down the hill. So we had to move to Lebanon again. So moving from a private school to a public school, moving from a, your own room to a house shared with 12 people, um, no friends, not, nothing that is related to your old life, the comfortable, the luxurious, the safe, the secure life, to something uncertain, full of you know um, scary stuff, scary people. Who are you? Why are you in, your, in my life? So I had to learn that one day you could just wake up and your whole life would be just different and not in a good way, in a bad way. So what are you going to do about it? Um, and then just things really went one after the other um, from the age of 13 to the age of, let's say, 27 or 28, one incident after the other. And I had no choice. It's not that I decided to be strong or I decided to be resilient. I literally had no cho choice. It was either this or I actually did it, which is three suicide attempts. It's either that or I'm going to kill myself. Um, so yeah, one thing led to the other. At the age of 13, left my secured life. And then at the age of 23, I lost my dad to suicide. And then I had to, um, what happened? And then, yes, yeah, so after my dad's death, basically everything changed. Um, got my heart broken. Uh, jobs were coming here and there. Friends backstabbing you. Uh, three suicide attempts, clinical depression, anxieties. So all of that. And then... When I had to, what I had a wake up call in my ex relationship with my ex boyfriend, which is I'm full of anger, I'm full of bitterness, I'm full of energy that is really not serving me or serving anyone. That's when I went to therapy, and when and every time I would attempt to kill myself and it fails, I get even more angry. Like just take me, <laughs> just end this pain, and that's how it started. Um, therapy, healing, self-improvement workshops. Uh, we were just talking before we hit the record button. I, I start to choose wisely who I spend my time with. I don't want people to give me bad advices. I don't want people to just tell me, hey, things are going to be okay when they're really not doing anything about it. So almost, I would say it took me more than eight to nine years of getting my, you know, shit together uh, emotionally, physically, socially, and mentally, and all of that. And then, of course, I had to live with a depressed and abusive mom. So that was not easy, which led me to leave the house at the age of 18. So I had to, you know, at the age of 18, every woman's, um, I don't know, worries would be, what should I dress? How, where I'm going to go clubbing at the weekend? I never had that. So growing up, that definitely or, or, or naturally would just give you the resilience, give you this fearless mindset that what's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Seriously, what's the worst thing that could happen? The worst has already been in my life and I survived it. So what else can life bring me that I cannot survive? Mm. Was there anything in particular that sort of helped you through that time? Was there a person? Was it, was it, I don't know, was there, was it something you were reading? Was it something you were listening to? You mentioned you've gone to therapy. Did, did you uh, find that helpful? Because like in the Middle East, especially, right, it's such a taboo still like, oh, to go to therapy or to ask for help. That's a big thing, right? And then it's a very patriarchal society where it, there's an ego aspect and you work with men in that case. So this yeah. is kind of where you work with men and that becomes even more difficult to ask for help, right? So and I think for both men and women oftentimes, but I'm curious, like, was there anything that, you know, like if anybody's listening and they're dealing with things right now, was there anything that helped you or, or, or someone or was it that reaching out? What helped? I had to go to two or three different therapists until I find my right one. So I would say pick the right help or pick the right expert to be working with because you are literally handing them your traumas on a plate and tell them, please help me. Um, so in my case, it was, yes, therapy did help, 
when I found the right expert, I had a very strong support system back in Beirut. Um, all of them come from a place of empathy and compassion and love. There's zero judgment. So yes, I was living in a country that merely depends on judging and pointing out fingers, but I surrounded myself with people who do not do that. If I want to have a meltdown, they just let me and then, okay, how can I help? If I'm having um, an anxiety attack, they know how to 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 help me go through it. Um, so I would say strong support system, but by strong support system is knowing that you are surrounded with people who you can be yourself with and you can be safe with without being judged. Not everyone who loves you is legit to help you. Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Um, that's what kept me through. And I do remember before I came here to Dubai for good, it was 2014 when I made that decision. And my mentor said, there's no way I'm going to let you go there, have a new beginning without letting go of your baggage. So that's when I went to a one year self-improvement uh, program to just let go of my baggage. Um, so choose the right program, choose the right therapy, choose the right healing. What is it that you want to let go? And how would your life be different when you let it go? Um, that would be an easy, not the easy, but the best uh, place to start. Mm -hmm. What advice do you wish people would have given you then? It, it pick any of the challenges, whether it was, you know, uh, dealing with the personal and the mental health issues or dealing with maybe or just starting your own business. What advice do you wish people would have given you? Wow, that's or, nice. Or what would what advice would you would you give yourself at that time if you if you're like looking back at it? Like what do you wish what do you wish you would have known at that time? But I'm not alone. That would be, yes, that, that's what's showing up, that I'm not alone because I had to go through everything on my own um, at the beginning because I thought I never had a choice. And then I just said, you know what? I just don't want to burden anyone. And no one had the enough knowledge or the enough awareness how to deal with someone like me and how to help or intervene when things get really messy. So they just let me be. Let me be. So I wish I knew I was not alone in this. And I wish people knew how to help a depressed person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that that's such a great point. It just, you know, even, I mean, in, in, in the case of us and like starting our own business, it just comes down to your environment, right? So, and I, I mean, and I mean, you, you've known me for some time, you know how big I am on terms of like surrounding yourself with the right people. And I really, really, truly believe it can either break you or make you and, you know, in anything that you do and it's, you know, having that right support and you're not alone and you have, you know, you, you, there is somebody out there is probably dealing with similar things. There's somebody who's willing to help. Um, and, and I think it's so important because that's probably one of the biggest obstacles that people face and it kind of gives them those spirals that they feel that they're alone and yeah. so you know and that's that's uh, it's it's not true and there's always somebody who's gonna you know who can help you in your journey so I think that's such a great point um, is there anything that you want um, anything else that I didn't ask you that you wish I would have asked you about your journey no about well, actually that channels? was really really it's very um, weird for me these days to be put in a place where I someone asks me the question, usually I'm doing the questioning. So that was a really nice um, experience for me. I would, maybe I would start telling people more by on, if you want to take care of other people, if you want to take care of your business, if you want to take care of your family, who, whatever external factor you're taking care of and you hold that responsibility, start from yourself because literally you cannot do that if you're not taking care of yourself inside out. Um, and it will show, so you, you don't have to be strong or tough or mm. whatever it is. Take care of yourself mentally, socially, physically, emotionally, and everything else will just take care of itself. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that, that's such a good point as well. I, I feel that now, in, I mean, in recent years, people have kind of sh shifted their perspective when it comes to self-care, right? Whatever that yeah. form looks like. And it used to be, you know, I used to have people say that it's maybe it's selfish, and, you know, and people think it's selfish to, to kind of put yourself first, but I'm like, well, no, in fact, if you, like you said, if you don't put yourself first, how are you supposed to take care of other people? 
All right. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I think that's such a beautiful point because it's, it starts with us. Like we cannot be there for other people. We cannot do what we do. We cannot add value to this world unless we're, we're starting with ourselves. It's, it's, it really is the, the magic mm-hmm. formula of it all. I wish I knew that years ago. <laughs> so. You and I both. <laughs> I, I've started to learn that in just a few years ago as I, as I entered into my 30s. <laughs> I, I, I began to realize many things and to, to find that, that magic place where things just tend to go <laughs> along well. So, um, uh, Ray, where can people find you? Where do you spend most of your time um, on social um, media? They can find me on LinkedIn, Rahav Kubesi. Um, or my Instagram, uh, Raise Your Mental Health. I always uh, share content, how to take care of yourself, how to manage your anxiety, and all of the things that are related to mental health, along with my podcast, uh, Don't Be a Man About It. Mm-hmm. Great. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for having Thank this conversation. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much.